like to read you a little story before we get started on our math unit for this week. This week we're going to be looking at all different types of measurement, but I found a story that I like that I thought was really, really cute. Here we go. Millions to Measure by David M. Schwartz. All right. Here we go. Let's all let's race all the way down to the beach. Ready, set. Hold on, hold on. That's too far. <clears throat> it's not far enough. How far is it? Let's ask Marvelissimo, the mathematical magician. All right. We need answers. Climb aboard. So here they go on a little flight. <clears throat> there are millions of things and many ways to measure. Let's fly back in time and see how people measured many years ago. So 2,000, 1,500, and back they go. When prehistoric people held a race, they had to think about distance. Ready, set. Hold on, how far should we run? They wanted to know about size and weight. Dad, how tall am I? Ma, how heavy is my little hog? Traders had questions about volume. How much juice will fit in that jug? A bright idea was needed. Ready, set, measure. We'll use our feet. And so people use their feet to measure distance. It's 1,000 feet to that rock. Ready, set, go. But measuring in feet could cause some confusion. You, my boy, are four feet tall. But my dad says I'm four feet tall. No way, I'm three feet tall. Could you see why there could be a problem? Because feet come in different sizes. Measured by my mom's humongous feet, you are only two feet tall. To measure weight, people used stones. My darling hog weighs 50 stones. But stones come in different sizes. My huggable hippo also weighs 50 stones. Huh? How many seeds could this container hold? That, that's one way volume was measured, but some seeds are tiny and others are huge. So once again, measurements could mean mix-ups. So this one person is counting and this person is counting. There must be a better way because when you're using stones, you can see that that hog is 50 stones because they're using big ones, where that one is using much smaller stones. Let's fly forward in time. Time for another bright idea. Oh, there's my snack. <laughs> All right. Kings, queens, sultans, sheiks, and chiefs solved the problem of measuring with feet of different sizes. From now on, they declared one foot would be used throughout the land. Hear ye, hear ye, behold the royal foot. Foot length, foot length rulers were made. See that my subjects measure nothing else. <laughs> Standards were also set for weight and for volume. This iron block weighs one pound. Use this pound and no other. Today we weigh our queen mother. Behold the royal cup. All volume shall be measured with the size of this cup and no other. One cup of mustard on the royal hot dog. Two cups of pepperoni on my royal pizza. But what happened when people from faraway lands worked together? It was hard to decide which ruler's rule would rule. Let's make bicycles. This is a three foot wheel from West Lavakia. Oh, but this is a three foot wheel from East Estonia. Your queen must have tiny feet. Gradually, people began to use the same ruler, no matter who their ruler happened to be. 
Now a foot was a foot whether you lived in East Estonia or West Lavakia. I'll race you to the border. Ready, set, go. Here is the kind of ruler we in the United States use today. The green snake is one foot in length. To measure something smaller than a foot, we use inches. A foot is divided into 12 inches. This pencil is three inches long. That pencil's not gonna be lasting all that much longer, is it? No matter how I stretch and squirm, I will still remain a half inch worm. <laughs> if you want to be very accurate, use fractions of an inch. You could measure to the half inch, quarter of an inch, and so on. All right, the chart, three feet equals one yard. To measure something larger than a foot, you can use yards. There are three feet in one yard. Moonbeam is about a yard high, not counting her horn. We measure longer distances in miles. One mile is 5,280 feet. Mount Everest, the world's tallest peak, is about 29,000 feet or 9,700 yards or about five and a half miles high. Whoo! Marvelissimo, look at that humongous hippo. How much do you think it weighs? Let's find out. We usually measure weight in pounds. Jello weighs eight pounds. Robert weighs 65 pounds, and so does Sandro. I'm guessing Jello is the cat. However, if Sandro grows up to be an Olympic heavyweight wrestler, he might weigh 260 pounds. But Sandro would be a pushover for Hercules the Huggable Hippo, whose weight is figured in tons. A ton is 2,000 pounds. Hercules weighs more than three Tons. That is a big hippo. <laughs> Good try, Sandro, but Hercules gets the gold for the most weight. What if Sandro shrinks? If he dwindles to less than a pound, we would then measure his weight in ounces. There are 16 ounces in a pound. This bird weighs one ounce. If you're weighing something even lighter, we could use fractions of an ounce. The spider weighs a tenth of an ounce. I want to be as heavy as the hippo. That would be scary to have a spider. That would be several tons. No, thank you. Remember that cups were used to measure volume, otherwise known as capacity. We still use them to measure liquids. Decide how thirsty you are and then check the chart. All right, so when we want to do liquids, the capacity of how much it will hold. There are eight ounces in a cup. There are two cups in a pint. There are two pints in a quart. There are four quarts in a gallon. And I have a really cool um, picture that I'll be showing you um, during uh, today's lesson, Monday's lesson, that will kind of show you how that goes. Jello is happy with a fluid ounce of milk, but after his workout, Hercules has a humongous thirst and he guzzles gallons. All right, I feel like that page is, oh, there we go. Okay, there are also similar liquid measurements. There are two tablespoons in one ounce. There are three teaspoons in a tablespoon. So tablespoons and teaspoons, ounces, pints, quarts, ounces, pounds, tons, marvelissimo, it is all too complicated. We need another bright idea. All right, so I'm gonna stop at this point and kind of explain to you that what we have talked about so far is what is known as a customary uh, unit of measurement. That is what we use here in the United States. There are only two other countries in the world, uh, Liberia and Myanmar, that use this customary length or customary um, weight system or length system or capacity system. The rest of the world uses what is known as the metric system, okay? So really quickly, I'll show you this that I have for this week right here, okay? So this is customary. So for length here in the United States, we use inches, feet, yards, and miles. For capacity, we use cups, pints, quarts, gallons, and then teaspoons and tablespoons 
And then for weight, we use ounces, pounds, and tons. And this is what we use here in the United States. However, that is not what most of the rest of the world uses. They use something called the metric system. So I'm gonna continue reading for you to see about the metric system. All right. Oh, goodness, the metric system. Get it to focus. All right, so the metric system is based on tens, hundreds, and thousands. The basic measurement is the meter, okay? So you have a meter stick, all right? If you are trying to measure something small, like an ant, then a meter would be way too big. You would try centimeters. There's 100 centimeters in a meter. A centimeter is one one-hundredth of a meter. Centa means one one-hundredth. So we'll be talking about what centa and meta and milla and deca mean to help you understand the metric system better. But what if you want to measure something smaller, like a flea or a freckle? Try millimeters. There are a thousand millimeters in a meter. A millimeter is one one thousandth of a meter. Milla means thousandth. All right, pop back in the balloon, the bright idea. We need dawn on a French priest in the late 1700s. All right, I've had enough of rulers and their rulers. We need a new system of measurement that is mathematically sound and logical. Check this out. Never, never feet again. Never, never feet forever. All right, so in the 1700s, it was realized that that was not the best system. Oh, look, here's more of my. <laughs> so, another system came about. In the metric system, large measurements are still in meters, not yards and miles. Soccer fields throughout the world are 100 meters long. Olympic runners can do 100 meters in 10 seconds. That's the best time. What's your best time? All right. Kilo means 1,000. So, a kilometer is 1,000 thousand meters. If you're in good shape, you can run a kilometer in less than 10 minutes. A pronghorn antelope can knock it off in 40 seconds. An <laughs> athletic snail, <laughs> it might take them eight days. Congratulations, all of you ran a race and now you're probably thirsty. These water bottles each contain one liter. In the metric system, volume is measured in liters and that's Something that should be familiar to you because when you buy um, soda from the store, you can get a two liter, and that is where that comes from, from the metric system. When the snail finally crosses the finish line, he'll probably be able to quench his thirst with a milla liter. Because remember, milla means one one thousandth. So if it's a milla liter, then it's one one thousandth of a liter. The snail deserves a medal just by making it. Running is a great, great way to stay in shape and lose weight. In the metric system, we talk about losing or gaining mass, and it is measured in grams. So here in the United States, when we use weight, we actually talk about um, ounces and pounds, but in the metric system, it's talking about mass, which is measured in grams. The mass of our athletic snail is eight grams. So when you think of a gram, think of a paper clip. A paper clip is about one gram. Jello's mass is more impressive. She is 3,600 grams. And since kilo means a thousand, that's over three and a half kilograms. Sandro and Robert both weigh 30 kilograms. I want to gain mass. I want to be an Olympic wrestler again. Me too. I'll grant that wish. Oh, here we go. As Olympic wrestlers, Sandro and Robert each weigh 118 kilograms. But they are no match for our champion, that truly massive and huggable hippo, Hercules. He tips the scale at 3,000 kilograms. That's three metric tons. Because the metric system is so logical and easy to use, it has been adopted by almost every country in the world. However, the United States, however, in the United States, most people do not use the metric system. As we have seen, confusion can result when people have different understandings about different units of measurement, and sometimes misunderstandings and measurements can lead to disaster. The engineers and operators 
who work on a multi-million dollar spacecraft made a big mistake. Some of them used feet and miles when others were using meters and kilograms. That's funny. That's actually something that we're going to talk about when you get into sixth grade. We'll talk about the International Space Station and talk about the Hubble telescope and how there was a fraction of a mistake and it did not work. All right, many people believe that the United States will eventually join the rest of the world and measure only in the metric system, but you don't have to wait until then because you already know how. All right. So um, that is the little book on the, the metric system and the customary system. I thought that that was really cute, kind of give you an idea of the customary system that came first and how that came about with feet and tons and pounds and, and things like that, and then realizing that it wasn't the best system and that in the 1700s a better system came along, a system that was based on tens and hundreds that made a lot more sense. Um, so all this week we'll be learning about the customary um, system and the metric system of measurement. All right, on to the lesson.